cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure that they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Did you know that when sports were first invented, they originally wore training simulations that gradually changed and evolved over the years? Movies were also ways to tell stories once campfires weren't needed to entertain anyone anymore. Many times in society, we just change and evolve on a system or method to improve it. But different elements from things we enjoy or are familiar with are often carried over into other areas. In this video, we're going to be looking at a very classic card game, Magic the Gathering, and how many of its elements are similar to other popular games, mainly Pokemon, Halo, and Dark Souls. Magic the Gathering is a card game that started off in the early 1990s. In it, you play as a wizard who uses a library of spells to summon and conjure attacks so that you can defeat your opponent. You do so by overcoming their own forces and reducing their life to zero. For the unfamiliar, it's easiest to imagine that you're standing on a battlefield with your opponent and summon aid to help you fight them. In order to fight, you draw mana from the land around you to gain the ability to summon things. There are all kinds of spells, including creatures, artifacts, enchantments, sorceries, and instants. In addition to this, there are five colors of mana that oppose each other like a pentagonal game of rock, paper, scissors, with each having specific abilities that appear on the cards and define each color identity. A red card won't have the healing abilities like a white one, a blue spell can counter other spells while black can't, and so on. If that was a bit confusing, don't worry. Even a computer algorithm can't figure out the outcome of a game, unlike traditional games or even other trading card games. The important bit we're looking for here is those keywords I mentioned earlier that appear on the cards. Each color has its own identity of abilities, mechanics, and keywords. The keywords usually fit in the flavor of the color they belong to and are a core part of the game. The interesting thing is that many of the mechanics these keywords represent are used in a ton of video games that we all play these days, turn-based or not. To familiarize ourselves with the abilities, let's go over each color in Magic and what it represents. Then list each keyword that the color's cards usually use. Red is defined by freedom and passion, and its cards usually show this by having a lot of random chance or direct damage. Blue is defined by knowledge and reasoning, and will often have very crafty or irregular cards that suit that nature. Green is represented by growth and speed, usually having lots of mana evolved abilities and things that embody nature and the wild of the lands. White is represented by order and control. It's a very altruistic color in Magic and often has healing or blocking cards, or symmetrical cards, which means they affect both players Black embodies ruthlessness and is easiest to imagine yourself playing if you're a supervillain. It lets you kill your own soldiers or resources to gain more, or exploits your opponent to give you the upper hand. Each of these colors also have groups inside the lore that represent each duo of colors, but that's for another video. For now, let's take a look at the common keywords based on each color. Some colors share a few keywords, so I've taken the liberty of eliminating duplicates for the sake of explanation. In order for any of this to make sense, you'll have to know what a card looks like. Let's go over our basic creature card real quick. This is Air Element. So up here we have the card's name and its mana cost. You can get up to one mana per turn, so this is a card that you'll usually have to wait till turn five to play. Despite only having four attack and defense, or power and toughness, the reason it costs five is that it has the flying ability. That means if I were to attack my opponent with it, they could only block it with something that also had flying, or the reach keyword, think like a giraffe. These keywords allow you to get an edge on your opponent and are where most of the fun interactions come into play. So, without further ado, let's move on to the different colors keywords. In red, we have Haste, First Strike, and Double Strike. Haste lets you attack with the card right away, while the rest of creatures in Magic usually have to wait for an entire turn to attack. First Strike is a combat ability that lets the creature do damage to an opponent before they receive any damage. So if two of them fought and would both normally die, a creature with First Strike would survive, since the other one would die before it got to hit them. Double Strike is pretty similar to First Strike, the only difference being that it throws in a second attack after the first one, in case you just needed extra damage to throw around. In terms of video game mechanics, Haste is really similar to speed mechanics like sprinting or thrusting around in Halo. In Pokemon, there are moves like Stealth Rock or Toxic Spikes that do damage the opponent's Pokemon right as they enter the field. First Strike can be compared to moves like Quick Attack or Extreme Speed in the Pokemon games, since they're always going to land first. In Dark Souls, running attacks will usually achieve the same effect, but I found that Halo has the most interesting comparison. Range. If you want to hit your opponent first in an FPS, the easiest answer is to hit them from far away before they see you. Double Strike is like stabbing weapons in Dark Souls, such as the Rapier, which poke a bunch of times. In Pokemon, moves like Fury Swipes are pretty close to the same. What's really cool is that in Pokemon, you can increase your Pokemon's attack to make each attack during the multi-hits do more damage, and the effect works the exact same in Magic. If I had a 1-1 one, one creature with double strike, normally it would do 2, but if I gave it a card that made its attack 2 times more, so it ended up at 3, I would do 6 since it's attacking twice. Blue has some really nifty effects that twist the rules a bit. 
most notably counter. Counter means that whatever your opponent plays doesn't happen. Did you just lose the game to a huge red creature coming onto the field and hitting you for five or more with haste? Nope, countered. Opponents survive an attack with a healing spell? I don't think so. Next up is flying, which means the creature can only be hit by something else with flying, as I talked about earlier. A simple but effective attribute. Flash is really cool because it lets you play the card whenever you want, even if it's not your turn. There's nothing like the feeling of playing a creature to defend and kill your opponent's incoming creature during their attack phase. Hexproof makes the creature immune to spells or just being targeted in general, which means it can't be chosen by any other card. Hexproof is good against decks that have a lot of counter spells or damage spells because they can't hit a creature with Hexproof. Last is Scry. Scry lets you get a glimpse of the next few cards of your deck and rearrange them. This is really, really handy if you're in a tight spot. I can't tell you how many times I've been saved by pulling the card I needed after scrying. Counter is pretty easy to compare to, well, counters from other games. In Pokemon, the move Protect comes to mind, and pairing your opponent is the biggest nope that you can pull off in Dark Souls. Flying is similar to some type of matchups in Pokemon, like Flying versus Ground. In Dark Souls, rolling will make you invulnerable for a few frames, which is essential to surviving. And in Halo, there's just flying vehicles. For Flash, there are moves that disrupt the turn order, like Rap in Pokemon, which hurts the opponent each turn, or summoning a friend in Dark Souls to help you fight. Hexproof is similar to Invisibility in Halo or the Clear Body ability in Pokemon, which makes you immune to status conditions and stat-changing moves. Since Scry can help you in a pinch, I felt it was comparable to power-boosting moves like Swords Dance in Pokemon or the Damage Booster in Halo. Green has Reach and Trample. Reach lets you block against flying creatures and Trample does any unblocked damage to the opponent. So if I was going to attack for 4 damage and they blocked with a 1-1, one, one, they'd still receive the 3 damage left. Reach is essentially a defensive upgrade like Wide Garden Pokemon or the Overshield in Halo, and Poise from Dark Souls also helps to retain stamina per block, which puts it in the same family. Trample is also essentially bleed damage, which is already in Dark Souls, or Poison from Pokemon. White has appropriately matching skills for its defensiveness, the most notorious being Vigilance, which means the creature doesn't have to tap when it attacks. This means that it can still block oncoming attacks and attack the opponent in the same turn. Lifelink heals the attacking player any damage that was dealt with the card that has Lifelink. The best part is that this works even if the damage is blocked. Lastly, there's Defender. Cards with Defender can attack, but as a result, they're often super cheap, high defense cards that make great, well, defenders. Vigilance can be compared to Skull Bash in Pokemon, because it's an attack that also raises the Pokemon's defense when used. In Dark Souls, attacking you with shields is similar, as you never have to let your guard down. And for Defender, there are some effects in Pokemon, like Mimikyu's ability, which gives it a free block. The move Substitute also comes to mind, because it lets the Pokemon sit behind a free wall of damage. Last we come to Black, which has some pretty nasty abilities. Death Touch means that any amount of damage the creature does when it attacks is enough to kill, so I could attack at my opponent with a 1-1 and it would kill their 10-10. Menace means that the creature attacking has to be blocked by more than one creature, or more specifically, it can't be blocked by less than two. Death Touch creatures are basically one punch man and have one hit KO gloves on. This is already in a ton of games, Smash Bros, Pokemon, traditional fighters, you name it, anything that has a one hit KO move comes to mind. Most of the bosses in Dark Souls now that I think about it. Menace is like an area of effect or explosion attack. Sneaking around your opponent in Halo is also acceptable, because you get to go around their defenses. That's more of a strategic move than an actual mechanic. In Dark Souls, we have Super Armor, which literally lets you take a hit while attacking. You don't get stunned and your attack still goes through, which is pretty nasty. So many colors and so many different mechanics. It's no wonder Magic is still thriving, even if they release terrible sets every so often. The craziest part is that keywords are only a small part of Magic's complexity. It's like a crazy deep iceberg made out of cardboard. Looking at the different mechanics of keywords is really fun and helps you see how the different moves or mechanics in other games could have been created. Imitation is often the most sincere form of flattery after all. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to unsubscribe if you liked the video. Please leave me alone and Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Thanks. <laughs>